members of College Prayer and Ritual Team, you are now across the stage. Good morning. We'd like to welcome you all to College Prayer Post 1123 for the remembrance of our fallen comrades. The Veterans of Foreign Wars Post 1123 Ritual Team wishes to offer its condolences to the families of the following comrades. Florence Adams. Tony Ballard. Anthony Dierick. John Dimbos. Donald Dunn. Marlon Forehand, David Gill, Michael Hickey, Jimmy Jackson, Jeffrey Jacobson, Howard Laurel, Gene McNoble, Robert McGlory, Neil O'Hara, Dean Pankos, Walter Shittiness, Richard Seaton. We thank them for their service. And we thank them for allowing us the honor for which we are about to perform. You may be seated with you too. We, the members of Call H. Craig, post 1123, veterans of foreign wars of the United States, are here assembled to pay lasting tribute to the respect of our departed comrades. When the call of our country was heard, these courageous comrades answered, Self was forgotten in the cause of greater good. As brave men and women, they marched away with an unbinding faith of their God, their country, and their flag. The red of our country's flag was made redder by the heroism. The white more stainlessly pure by the mode which impelled them and the starry fields of our nation's glorious banner, the blue, has been glorified by the service they gave to the American idea. Comrade Chaplin, you will now go to the prayer. Those of you that can, please rise. On cover. Almighty and merciful God, Father of all, amongst, amongst these monuments of the dead, we see thy hand. In the depths of our sorrow, we realize the truth of the inspired words. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. As comrade after comrade, departs, we march on with the ranks grown thinner. Help us to be faithful unto thee and to one another. We beseech thee, look in mercy upon all of us here, assemble, and with thine own tenderness, console and comfort those bereaved by the hand of death. Give them the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for, for the spirit of heaviness, Heavenly Fathers, bless our country with freedom, peace, and righteousness, and through thy sovereignty and Holy Spirit's favor, may we all meet at last before thy throne of grace in heaven, and to thy great name shall be praised forever and forever. Amen. Amen. Cover. Please be seated. One by one, as the years roll on, 
we are called upon to fulfill these sad duties and respect for our fallen comrade. The present, full of the cares that beset all nations, whether engaged in war or peacetime, fade away. As we look back on the days that our comrades left their homes to defend our country, imbued by the spirit of devotion and inspired by an unyielding love for their native land. They gladly went forth and joined with comrades both young and old to preserve our nation's heritage and its freedom. We trust that the example set by our comrades will prove a glorious beacon to the young of our country and to those who may be called upon to uphold the honor of our flag. As the years roll on, we too shall have finished our fight. We shall be laid to rest, and our souls will follow the long column to the rim above. As all unfolding deaths, honor by honor, hour by hour, shall mark their recruit. Comrades, let's, comrades let's, let us all live that when the keeper of the eternal record shall be had, shall have called our names for the last time, those we leave behind may say, may say of us, as we now say of, this, of these comrades here that lies before us. A true, hearted com a true hearted comrades and fearless defenders of our country and our flag. Officers, you will now perform the last duties of your station. Officers, please rise. Comrade Junior Vice Commander. On behalf of Carl H. Craig, Post 1123, Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States, I present this tribute as a symbol of our undying love for our comrade. Comrade Senior Vice Commander. I place a symbol of purity on this table and may each generation emulate the unselfish devotion to the duty of the lowest of the lowliest of our comrades. Comrade Officer of the Day. We place this last token of our affection from his comrade in the arms upon the casket of our departed comrade and crown his mortal dust with this symbol of victory.
on behalf of our glorious republic, for whose integrity our comrades of the Veterans of Foreign Wars enlisted and, and served, we place upon their altar this emblem of our country, a country whose arms are always open to the sheltered and the oppressed. Chaplain. Again, please rise those that are able and on cover. The march of our comrades is over, and they lie down in the house appointed for all the living. We are reminded here of the frailty of human life and the tenure by which we hold our own. In such an hour as ye think not, the final summons may come, which no one disobeys. It seems fitting that we should leave our comrade of the army to rest under the arching sky, as he did when he pitched his tent, or lay down in days gone by, weary and footsore by the roadside, or on the battlefield. We, our departed comrades of the Navy, no longer hear the sounds of the waves, or float upon the bosom of the deep, no longer sail beneath peaceful skies, nor are driven before the angry storm. Our departed comrades of the Air Force no longer fly through the enemy fire to drop their bombs or fight off the enemy attack. Our departed comrades of the Marines no longer look forward to beachhead landings, dense jungles, or tours on foreign soil. May each of us, when our voyage is battle of life and missions are over, find a welcome that region of the blessed, where there is no more storm-tossed sea, nor scorching battlefields, nor dangerous skies. Our comrade is in the hands of our Heavenly Father, and God gives his beloved sleep. He will be laid to rest but let us cherish his virtues and to limit and imitate them, reminded by the place he fills no more, that our ranks are thinning. Let each one be loyal to every virtue, so true to every friendship, so faithful in their remaining marches, that he will be ready to fall out and take his place in the great review hereafter. Not in doubt, but with faith that the merciful captain of our salvation will call him to that fraternity which on earth and he, re and he remains in heaven unbroken. Cover. Please be seated. We will now have the folding of our nation's flag. Flag, flag, flag team, please rise. Approach your station.
On behalf of Carlos Craig, Post 1123, our president and the soldiers present, we present to you this offering of our nation's flag to our fallen comrades. At this time, if I can ask anyone who is a member of our armed forces or have been a member of our armed forces to please stand for the final salute. Reset off. Order arms. Thank you, you may be seated. This concludes our services. On behalf of Carl H. Craig, Post 1123, I thank you all for allowing us the honor to perform this service for our fallen comrades. Uh, at this time, we have a mic set up here. If anyone would like to say a few words in uh, re remembrance of our fallen comrade, you have freedom to do so. Please limit your time to at least two minutes. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. Well, my daughter wasn't able to be here today, but she wrote something, and I, I, wanted, I wanted to read what she wrote. I am grateful that I was blessed to have in my life. You see, he was my stepdad. There are some daughters that aren't able to say good things about stepdads, but I, could, but I know he was part of a package when he married my mom and accepted me with open arms. I'm sure I was a handle, but he never backed away. He was always there for me and willing to help me when I needed help. And part of who I am is because of him. I will always be grateful for that. I will always treasure the memories that I have of him. My dad showed kindness to everyone who was always willing to help those in need. He had a great sense of humor, even if his dad jokes weren't all that bad. On November 13th, 2020, he was called home. We had to temporarily say goodbye to him. I miss him a lot. There was an empty place in my heart, but I know that we will be again. <laughs> Excuse me. But I know that we will see him again. And until then, I treasure the memories. Thank you. Is there anyone else? On behalf of the Gill family, um, we just want to thank you, all veterans and VFW, for all that you have done for our family. We are honored to be here, and we are honored that you guys have honored my father and his family. We are in gratitude to all of you for all that you have done and for everything that you have done for this wonderful country. Thank you, and we thank God for all of you and your service. And thank you from the Gill family for what you've done for my father. Thank you.
he would be, he would give his heart and soul to anybody that had asked him for it. And my biggest regret is that I didn't start hunting with him earlier. We had the same lights and what happened. I did get to take him turkey hunting and he had a fall. But I just, Don was one of the best. And I really, really thank all of you for showing up here today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Our post, Senior Vice Commander. that they had in life and what they did in the military. So we look at all of the uh, people and we respect them and we think about them day and day. One of the people that was mentioned here earlier was Bob Dunn. And Bob Dunn was kind of a special guy. Um, he, like my comrade, the chaplain, had to say about him. We joined in a card playing here, not for money, but for fun and enjoyment on Tuesdays in the morning. And Bob was one hell of a card player, pretty shoot sharp, and he had a lot of, a lot of remarks that he could always uh, drop at the table. And it was kind of a learning experience to listen to some of the stuff that Bob would have to say to us. On the other side, there's another Bob that I think needs to be recognized, and that's Bob McGorry. Now, Bob McGorry was my neighbor at Lake Berryessa, and we had beautiful places up there, and Bob had two of these meanest dogs that ever existed. I forget their names, but these dogs were, I think, Rottweiler, is that right? And Bob's unit was up on a hill. And if you pulled up in the boat, these dogs could make it down 200 feet in three leaves. And they were on the dock. But we had some great times together. We had a lot of adult beverages at Bob's place up on the uh, top of his deck and uh, a lot of stories, but uh, had a, a lot of uh, good friends. Uh, Vince Havasetto was at Lake Berryessa, so there's a, 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 a Bob McGorry left a footprint in Lake Berryessa, and we will miss him. I miss him a lot. He lived down the street from me here on Fleming, and uh, we used to stop together if we saw one another on the street or something like that, have a little chat, and he could tell you some stories, let me tell you. And I do a lot about uh, cars from him, and about, he was a car salesman dealer, owner dealer, owner dealer, of Cadillac out on Sonoma Boulevard. So he's been around for a while. Anyway, I thank everybody, I thank his wife Lynn, I thank Vince, anybody else here recognizing him, and I miss your name. I thank you very much for being with us this morning. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else? Okay, so if I may. My name is Reggie Russell. I'm the current district commander for District 16, in which this post falls. I'm a former commander of this post, but that would, mean, that would be meaningless if I didn't mention the people that helped me get there. And the people, some of the people that helped me get there are on this list. Um, 
I would like to mention that this list that I'm reading from that contain the names of these heroes fought in conflicts dating back to World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and Iraq. I can't really say much about Don Dunn, who, that hasn't already been said. If you never met Don Dunn, just listen to one of the stories that anyone can tell about him and you'll instantly fall in love. Don was a very special person. I mean, very special. There are a few people in life that you'll meet that you'll have an instant connection to, and he was one for me. He exhibited everything that you would want in a, a comrade and in a friend of the Post. Uh, Don and I used to share a funny story. We used to, uh, every time we see each other, we fist bump each other. Everyone just thought that was so cute, but the only reason we couldn't is because we couldn't hug. <laughs> His monocle was Little Brown Man, but he was a fascinating person, and he will sorely be missed. Uh, Chris, you, you have my deepest condolences. He was a very special man, very special man, no doubt in this post and in his family. Jeffrey Jacobson. Jeffrey Jacobson was commander before me. Uh, we were right around the same age, so it became a huge shock when I learned of his passing. It was very sudden. Jeff was a very dedicated person to the post and to the students in which he taught. He was uh, a person who established an Air Force uh, ROTC at his native school in Brentwood and he brought them to an esteemed status as such. But that speaks to his history within the Air Force. He did the same thing. He raised, he rose throughout the ranks, but he never forgot the groundedness that he had growing up in Napa and Vallejo. And he brought that right back to him when he came back to this post. Robin McGlory is a Vietnam vet. I got a chance to meet him a couple of times at a couple of our dinners. And I will tell you, he was very colorful. <laughs> and with that colorfulness, he shared some of the most enduring stories. But one of the things that I can tell you is that he kept telling me, you're doing a good job, kid. And I always thought that was really special. And he will certainly be missed as well. So my condolences to his family as well. Walter Shisney. Walter, when I first took my first stab at command for this post, I was looking for a chaplain. And I asked quite a few people, and as you can tell, being a chaplain, as, he, as, as, can, be, as can be attested to, it's a hard duty because you're not actually from a seminary school and you don't have the formal training of it. Everything is outlined in a book. However, People expect you to live a certain way, talk a certain way, behave a certain way. And as a member of our post, we expect you to uphold those type of things. Well, Walter was a little different from that. <laughs> but he was a very good man. And Walter, being a former commander of this post, knew how hard it was to fill positions. And when I asked him, I didn't have to ask him again. He stepped right up and he did the job on uh, multiple times. So, um, he passed that information on to the current chaplain that we have, and we are extremely, uh, dare I say, blessed to have the chaplain that we have now. We've had a number of great chaplains that walk through those doors to perform those duties, and he falls right in line with all of them. For all the soldiers, all the comrades that I mentioned on this sheet, all of which participated and served in the various services of our, of, our, of our country as well, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Their duty and their dedication pushes us forward to know that we have something to look forward to, and we, as their, as their auxiliary, have a way to provide them a place to come back home to. The extension of their family is the soldiers that you see before you here. So when we tell you 
you have our deepest consolations because we're missing a family member as well. With that being said, this will conclude our services. We thank you for coming. Please be safe going home. Thank you.